What's going on guys? So for this video, I wanted to discuss the top five most popular residency specialties and also discuss the data behind why certain specialties are more popular than others. So let's get to it. What's going on guys? My name is Prerak. I love making videos about medicine and productivity and even business. But today's video is specifically about medicine and specifically I'm talking about the matching process, which is the process by which fourth year medical students match to particularly hard residency spots. Um, so the agenda for today is to actually go over the 2020 residency match data that was recently released. And what I'm going to do is focus objectively on the data and kind of use that to deduce what the most popular residency spots are, um, what are the more competitive residencies, and ultimately hope to educate you if you don't ultimately know how many slots there are available, what specialties are competitive, which ones are more popular, which ones are not. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So the biggest thing I want you to take away from this presentation is that the demand for residency slots is increasing much more then the amount of residency slots are increasing. So the demand is increasing and outpacing the supply. So if you can see here from 19, almost, I think this might be 1950, all the way to 2020, the total amount of PGY1 positions, which is just basically your intern year, your first year residency slots, those have been increasing, but they've been increasing significantly less than the amount of applicants applying for those positions. So you can almost think of this as a basic, you know, even shopping problem where if someone wants to buy a lemon, there's so many more people who want to buy lemons than there are lemons, where in this case, lemons are actually residency spots, and the people who want to buy those lemons are actually residency applicants. So in short, this is why residency is becoming more and more competitive. I think everyone hears that every year, becoming a doctor becomes more competitive, even though it seems like we need more doctors. But the point is, the slots for residents is increasing, but not nearly at the rate at which the total amount of residency applicants is increasing, as you can see here. So we have almost 40,000 applicants and you have only about 30,000 positions or 30, yeah, only about 35,000 positions. So that already shows you why, why medical school already is competitive and how residency can sometimes even be a bit more competitive, especially when you break it down by specialty. So now let's look a little bit more at this data. And here is another table from the uh, information that's been released recently. And so you can see the number of positions in this column, uh, the total number of active applicants in this column. And now the next thing that I want to point out is actually in each of these columns, you can see the match rate by percent. So what it's essentially saying is in the year 2020, 93.7% of MD seniors, like if you're going to a medical school and they give an MD after four years, 93% of seniors at those institutions match. Similarly, 90.7% um, of DO seniors match. So if you are going to a medical school in the United States and at the end of four or five years, they give you a DO degree, about 90.7% of those seniors end up matching. Uh, and then shortly after that, there's actually 61% and 61.1%. Let me explain what those refer to. So the 61% refers to U.S. international medical school graduates. So usually this refers to people who go to medical school in the Caribbean and therefore are classified as U.S. international medical school graduates. So if you go to a, that sort of medical school, the chance of you matching after four years is 61%. Similarly, if you go to a non-U.S. international medical school, such as, you know, you went to medical school in India, you went to medical school in Russia, wherever it was, and you then applied to match for residency in the United States, which you have to do if you want to become a practicing physician, then 61.1% of those people end up matching. The good part about all of this data is that it's projected right here. So time is on the x-axis, and on the y-axis is match percent. And the big trend I want you to pick up is U.S. DO seniors and U.S. MD seniors have seen an increase and relatively high match rate, usually above 80 to 90 percent. However, on the other hand, if you are a IMG, which is known as an international medical graduate, it is significantly tougher uh, to match here. It's not impossible, but it is, as you can see, 61% match compared to 93.7. It is quite a bit tough. Um, but the good part is that this has been trending upwards. So as you can see that it has actually been increasing. The chance of you matching as an international medical graduate has been increasing every year. 
Uh, the only thing that's left to point out here is this other column. The other column you'll see also has a pretty low match rate. What is often in these other columns? These are often students that have gotten an MD or DO degree but did not pursue residency in their senior year. So for example, you could think of someone who uh, maybe got an MD and then decided to work in business for four or five years and never went to residency. And then they maybe want to go to residency. They would be classified in this other column. And notice that there, the match rate is also significantly lower. And this is what I mean by the opportunity cost of medical school residency is really high. If you don't go to residency straight out from medical school, it can actually be much harder to match into specialties, any specialty, let alone the competitive ones, right? And so that's the big things I wanted you to take away from this graph. It is really tough to get into residency. And, and a lot of that is where you're coming from, unfortunately. So now here is a really interesting graph that is going to break down this data even more. Uh, the first graph is actually showing you the number of seniors at U.S. medical schools that give MDs, right? So if you go to a medical school in the United States and you are a senior, um, well, then this is you, right? And so it's showing you that in 2016, there were 18,000 people. And in 2020, there was about 19,326. And again, the match rate has almost consistently been in the 90%, which is one of the reasons why MD schools um, have been known to be uh, quite competitive. And you can see the same thing here of U.S. medical schools, but these are graduates, right? These are not seniors. So this is what I was referring to earlier. If you graduate medical school, and you don't apply to residency in your senior year, but you apply at some other time, notice that it is significantly harder to match. The match rate is almost 50%, right? And I don't know if this is fair, if it's not fair, but I can give you a reason as to why this is the case. Oftentimes, if you don't do residency right after medical school when you're a senior, a lot of these residency program directors may say, why didn't you do it? You know, like, was there a reason? Did you doubt the profession? So then when you try to reapply, you can see why there would be some hesitancy into saying, I don't know, I don't know, right? Uh, similarly, for USDO medical school seniors, again, note that this has an increase. It's been increasing every year for the last five years, which is great news. And also note that the match rate tends to be about 90%. And the DO seniors has also been increasing as the DO degree has gotten significantly more popular, which rightfully so it should. It has literally the same credentials um, and the match rate is almost equivocal, which is fantastic, right? Um, and again, this is foreign trained physicians. So these are international medical graduates. And again, as we discussed, the match rate for them is a little bit lower, uh, but it still is possible. And another big trend is these applicants have remained relatively stable over the last few years, right? It actually may have even de decreased between 2016 and 2020. Um, and the match rate has consistently increased. So there are some good trends in all of this data. But I do want to point out that when you think about medical school, when you think about match rates, all of these factors should play a role because some of this stuff is not intuitive. And at the bottom, you have everything um, compiled as we discussed earlier. Now, I actually want to pivot because I want to discuss as I told you in this graph, there's 34,000 PGY1 spots, right? First year residency spot, 34,000 of them. How are those 34,000 spots broken down? Here are how they're broken down across the country. Um, and you'll see that the total number is 34,000. And each of the specialties is listed here as well as the total number of slots, right? And notice that dermatology only has 31 slots. You can become a dermatology resident, but there's 31 spots that are exclusively for dermatology PGY1s. There's a lot of other dermatology programs that you can enter as a PGY2, but in terms of PGY1 slots for dermatology, there's only 31, which goes to show you why derm has been known to be a notoriously competitive specialty. Similarly, one of the more popular um, PGY1 spots is for internal medicine, which is, as you can see, 25.4% of these 34,000 slots is for internal medicine. And again, rightfully slow, internal medicine is by far the most popular subspecialty uh, because it is the jack of all trades. It includes hepatology, it includes infectious disease, it includes um, almost every organ system inside your body, like cardiology. And therefore, a lot of people apply there. But another thing I want to point out is, again, 
notice that some of these other specialties that we consider competitive, there are just not that many slots for, like interventional radiology. Similarly, neurosurgery is also known to be a relatively competitive specialty because not as many slots available. So now you kind of can put into perspective why a lot of these specialties are competitive and why specialties can have their own reputation. Because again, the slots for each one is not equally distributed and it totally varies. So with all this, I want to conclude this video by discussing the five most popular um, medical specialties. And the reason I want to discuss this is because sometimes people are really wondering what are the most popular residency slots and why are they the most popular? And so again, we discussed internal medicine categorical track is 25.4% of the 34,000 slots, followed by family medicine, followed by pediatrics, followed by surgery, and then followed by emergency medicine. And again, this makes sense, right? Internal medicine doctors are usually the jack of all trades, and they need to know quite a lot about um, a lot of organ systems, and they appeal to a lot of students. Also, if you want to become a hepatologist, if you want to become a nephrologist, if you want to become a cardiologist, you have to do internal medicine training first, and that's why it becomes a big, big track and a popular track. Similarly, family medicine is second. That also is not surprising because family medicine docs are again, very popular and very essential to our day-to-day -day lives. Many of you may not have ever seen a nephrologist, but you definitely have seen a family care doctor, right? So it makes sense that family docs are quite popular, followed by pediatrics because kids are very important in our day-to-day -day lives, and then surgery because surgeons are really important, and then emergency medicine. So that's where I'm going to end this video. I have a lot more data I'm going to discuss in future videos, but if you like this video, thumbs up, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.